All right. So this will be our last section for the day. Uh, yeah, it's fairly short. So um, more than likely, when I get to the end of it, we'll call it a day. Um, if class ends before I finish this, I'll, I'll, I'll release you all. I'm going to honor the time, but I, I'm also going to finish the, the section. OK, so we're continuing chapter 11 on counting methods and probability theory. So in the, in the previous section, we worked on it was 11.2 permutations that was taken in objects permutated R at a time. And that happens when the order is important. If we if we have group A, B, C, we rearrange it to group B, A, C. We count that as different, right? So now with combinations, what we're going to see is if we have group A, B, C, and we rearrange it to group B, A, C, we're going to consider that the same thing, right? So with combina combinations, the same as permutation. It's just that when you when you change the order, we're going to count that as the same thing. Versus permutation, when we change the order, we count that as something different. All right. So with combinations, it's the same formula as permutation, but in order to remove the repeats, long story short, we're going to divide by R factorial. OK, let's see it in action. A few objectives. One, distinguish between permutations and combination problems. Two, solve problems involving combinations using the combination formula. A combination of items occurs when the items are selected from the same group. No item is to be used more than once, and the order of the items makes no difference, right? So if we change the order, we count that as the same thing. So we, we have to kind of group all our repeats together. Permutation problems involve situations in where the order matters. Order matters. I feel like that's a shirt. <laughs> that's a bad, that's poor taste. <laughs> order matters. Order I'm just, now I'm getting this image of people like protesting. The order matters. <laughs> That's really, that's really poor taste. That's, that's like a, a Black Lives Matter. That's really poor. Just just ignore that. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> okay, so permutation is where the order matters, and combination are problems involving a situation in where the order, the order of the items makes no difference. So if we change the order, it doesn't matter, right? It makes no difference. And every time I see matters, I'm thinking people protesting. <laughs> you know. I told you we don't need haunted houses. There's so much chaos going on, you know. Distinguish between permutations and combinations. Determine which involve permutations and which involve combinations. Okay, so again, with permutations, the order is important. Those are counted as different things. With combinations, if we change the order, we consider it the same thing, so the order is not important. Six students are running for a student government, president, vice president, treasurer, and treasurer. Um, the student with the greatest number of votes becomes the president. The second highest vote getter becomes vice president. The student who gets the third largest number of votes will be treasurer. How many different outcomes are possible? Are we actually counting these? OK, that's hard. Uh, let's do this. <clears throat> Can I paste? That would be nice. Nice, right? So what do we say? President, vice president, and treasurer. So we're going to say. President, Vice President, and Treasurer. Okay. So, so say we choose, say person A becomes here. Say person A becomes President, per person B becomes Vice President, and person C becomes Treasurer. Right. So then, suppose we 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 rearrange the order. Right. This is one possible outcome. What if what if the outcome was B A C? Right? Are, are these the same thing? Are these considered the same outcome, or are these two different outcomes? All right. Um, I mean, we could do that, but um, what do you guys think? Let's let's just on on the teams call. You know, let's let um, let's let the thumbs up mean the same, and the heart mean different. If you think it's the same, do a thumbs up. If you think it's different, do a heart. If if these mean if these are the same outcome. You would do a thumbs up. If these are two different outcomes, you would do a heart. What do you think? Just real quick. See y'all. Any any takers? <clears throat> what takers are you guys there? Let me say that one more time. So if you so let's 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 do this one more time. In this first in this first outcome, present person A is the president, person B is the vice president, person C is the treasurer. Right now, say we rearrange it, like we switch 
these two. Say we switch them. So now person B is the president, person A is the vice president, person C is the treasurer. Are these two outcomes, are they the same? If you think they're the same, you do a thumbs up. If they're two different outcomes, you do a heart. What do you think? What do you guys think? In the teams, see all. No takers, you guys there? I might need to change my attendance. I don't think we're over there. Oh, I can start doing some quizzes. I don't know if anybody's there and I get any responses. Let me see. Let me check one more time. Okay. Let me see. So these are actually considered two different outcomes, right? So because the order is important, that means we would count this using the permutations formula, right? So then we have six options for president. We choose somebody for president. Then we have five for vice president and then four for treasurer. Uh, because it's a permutation, we're just going to do six times five times four. 20, six times two is 12, 120 possible outcomes. Right? We use permutation. We did um, we did six p three. Right? Let me um, let me use the formula. Let me let me use the formula so you can see it in action. So we got this result. I'll put it over here. If we calculate six p three, right? That's going to be six factorial over six minus three, which is three factorial. Six five four three over three. 6 times 5 times 4 gives us this, okay? So we got 120 possible outcomes. Again, for this one, we were saying that the order is important, right? So if we change the order, that's counted as something different. When the order is important, that means we're doing a permutation. When the, If we change the order and it's counted as the same thing, we're going to do a combination. Let's see. So we got 120 here. Order matters since the number, oh, see, they didn't want us to calculate it. So it's a permutation. That's fine. That's what I was thinking, but we went on to calculate it anyway. So permutation. Six people on the board of a, a supervisor for your neighborhood park. A three-person committee is needed to survey the poss possibility of expanding the park. How many different committees can be formed from the six people, right? So it's a three-person committee. Pace. Right? <clears throat> so then say we choose, you know, person A, person B, person C. This is one possible outcome. This is one three-committee three team. Say we rearrange the order. So now we have person B, person A, person C. Are these considered the same thing? Same? Are these the same outcome or are these two different outcomes? If we're choosing a team of three, all right? Uh, let me see if I can get a screenshot. And now let's see. Um, share. I just want to copy. Let me, done. let me do copy and delete. And allow me to paste. Paste. A lot of pace. There we go. Okay, so we'll we'll just use this. Oh, right. Um, if you feel like it's the same, if these if if these two arrangements are the same outcome, then let's do the thumbs up. If you feel like these two outcomes are different, we're gonna do a heart. All right. What do you guys think? Are these the same outcomes or are these different outcomes? Nobody? You guys there? All right. So if we have if we have a three person committee, a team, we have person A, B, and C, that's one team. If we rearrange it, if we have team B, A, C, are these the same three people or are these different three people? These are actually the same three people. So in this case, if we change the order, because these are the same, that means we're working with a combination. This is an example of a combination. Battery's getting low. Let me try to wrap up. So this should be a combination. Okay. All right. Okay. So the order in which the three people are selected does not matter since they are not filling different roles. So that means we're working with a combination. Given the letters A, B, C, D, uh, we can compare how many permutations and how many combinations are possible if we choose three letters at a time. Uh, this column contains only one combination, A, B, C, A, B, D, yada, yada, yada. So if we, if we did 4P3, right, where each 
order is counted as something different. Let me see how how they articulate it. All right, if we think in terms of permutations, we're gonna have all, like, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, six by four. So we have 24 different combinations. Let me see, is that right? Mm -hmm. When we have four objects taken six at a time, four times three times two, yeah, 24 different outcomes, right? But then with combinations, right? These are all the same combination. Like, like if we think of team teams of three, this is the same team of three. If we change the order, you know, Ant Man, Batman, Catwoman, I don't know. Um, these are the same three people. If we had a team, right? Uh, if we change the order here, these are the same, right? So then the way we count this to account for these repeated results is as follows. So this is where a combination comes in. And remember I said, so combination, the way I, I like to remember combination, so in CR, we have N objects taken R at a time with combination. Um, the way I remember it is permutation, so NPR divided by R factorial, right? So then that's going to be N factorial over N minus R factorial. If we say divided by R, we flip and multiply, so then we get this times R factorial like this, right? So if you, if you feel comfortable calculating permutations, if you want the combinations, just divide by R factorial. Um, okay, let's keep going. So how many three-person committees could be formed from eight people? Okay. So three-person committee, if we have team ABC, if we change the order to team BAC, is this the same outcome or is this different? If you change the order, those are going to be considered the same. So we have repeats that we need to account for, and we account for those repeats by dividing by R factorial, right? So long story short, we're doing a combination here. We have eight objects taken R at a time, uh, taken three at a time. Eight eight people to fit into three different slots. Okay. Um, I mean, I could do that. Let's just do this for now. Okay. Let's let me. I kind of want to have the urge to do the following. Copy, be paste. So, like for instance, if we're doing a three-person committee, we choose one of the eight from slot for the first slot. Then we have seven choices here, and then six choices here, right? But you know, if we have person A, person B, and person C, and we rearrange it, person B, person A, person C, notice these are the same. Right. These are the same grouping. So we need to we need to have a way to remove the repeats. Again, we remove the repeats by dividing by R factorial. Right. So long story short, we're going to get. Eight times seven times six divided by three times two times one. Right. If we did the formula up top, eight C three is going to be the same as eight P three. Divided by three factorial. 8P3 ultimately is going to be 8 times 7 times 6. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. See, so we get the same thing. Okay. So then notice 3 times 2 is 6. So these guys cancel. 49, 56. So it's 56 different teams. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. So in December of 2011, the U.S. Senate consisted of 51 Democrats and 47 Republicans and two independents. How many distinct five-person committees can be formed if each committee must have three Democrats and two Republicans? Let me think about this. Two independents. So we want... Three Democrats and two Republicans. Well, how many Democrats do we have to choose from? 
Okay. So 51 choose 3, right? This is called the binomial coefficient. This is another way of writing um, NCR. So instead of writing 51 choose 3 when I'm doing a combination, this is called the binomial coefficient. We can write this. This just means I'll write it in the next one. It just means 51 choose 3. We have 51 Democrats. We want to take them three at a time and remove the repeats. So that means we're working with combination. That's what this means, right? Two Republicans. How many Republicans? 47. So 47 Republicans taken two at a time. I think that's it. All right. And again, this means 51 choose three times 47 choose two. Okay. So then 51 choose three means 51 times 50 times 49 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 times 47 times 46 over 2 times 1. Okay. I'm just going to use the calculator. Clear. Okay. So we can do combinations and permutations in this kind of calculator, and many of them can actually do it. Um, so I'm going to say 51 math probability number three. So 51 choose three. And let me ins introduce some parentheses. And then we got 47 choose two. Okay. Let's see. 22. 5, 11, 8, 25. Thousand million, 22 million, 11, 8, 25. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, that's the first part. Okay. So that's picking three Democrats out of five, and then two Republicans out of 47, 22 million, 5, 11, 8, 25. All right. Just in the nick of time, I am just about, my battery life is just about out, okay? So that's going to take, that's going to take some effort. Um, the main takeaway here, you know, is first is, is making a distinction between permutations versus combinations. With permutations, when you consider one outcome, like if you consider the outcome A, B, C, if you change the order, is that counted as the same thing or is that a different outcome, Right. If you change the order and it's a different outcome, that means we're talking about permutation. If you change the order and it's considered the same thing, then we're talking about combination. Permutation um, is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And then to do combination, just take that answer and divide by r factorial, right? Okay, we're about to, we're about, oh, that sounds, give me chills, it's so weird. Um, so that actually brings us to the end. Are there any burning questions? On once, on twice, forever hold your peace once. Okay. So if there aren't any burning questions, we're going to go ahead and end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of your day. On Thursday, we're just going to continue with the next part. Um, you know, hopefully you all are using your resources. You found some kind of tutor. Um, I'm available on my office hours. You know, just you got to get my attention or whatever, but I'm there. We can like work on this stuff together. Um, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll meet back on Thursday, same time, same place, with the next installment. Take care. Beautiful minds. Peace. <laughs>